Hello everyone, today I'm going to discuss IoT security. What is IoT? IoT is short for Internet of Things. And what is an Internet of Thing? Anything with a network connection can be called an IoT device. This could be your smart watches, security cameras, smart thermostats, smart refrigerator, your smart TVs, all of these devices that are connected to the network to bring you more comfort, convenience, and additional functionality, they can be called IoT devices. And IoT devices are also present in enterprises, in office environments, and also in industrial environments. So it need not be only about uh, consumer devices. What are some benefits of IoT devices? They give us new functionality. For example, they can keep track of usage patterns, do some analytics, and then provide us insights. For example, if we have a smart air conditioning system, it will track our usage how much amount of electricity it is consuming and can give us information insights on at what times it would be best to switch it on and switch it off and also at what temperature setting would allow us to save some money. So it would automate certain, some of those tasks if you set it as, okay, optimize for comfort as well as uh, cost, then it can automatically do it for you. It also gives you convenience, meaning these network connected IoT devices can talk to other IoT devices and can carry out a workflow so that you don't have to be involved. It saves time, increases productivity, and you know you won't forget to do something because now these devices can take care of a certain workflow that you have developed for them. And then they also bring you added comfort. For example, if you have a connected lighting system or a smart uh, thermostat, it understands your behavior when you wake up, when you leave for work, when you come back from work, and can basically pre-cool, set the lighting before you wake up, and also maintain the same temperature by the time you get back uh, from work. So those are some of the benefits of IoT devices. According to Gartner, there would be about 20 billion internet connected devices by 2020, out of which 12 billion would be in the consumer category and another 8 billion devices would be used in the business category. I actually would like to segment it out further and add an industry category here. Uh, consumer devices are the ones that we talked about earlier. These are your smart uh, uh, thermostats and smartwatches and so on and so on. Enterprise IoT devices, these are things like your network connected printers, uh, IP phone systems, badge control systems, physical access control systems, your fire alarm systems. These are the things I would put in the enterprise IoT category. This is very different from the IT infrastructure, which is your laptops, mobile devices, um, your networking uh, equipment like uh, firewalls, switches, all of those would be managed in a different way. So that's the distinction I want to make. And then in the industrial category, I want to look at IoT devices in hospitals or IoT devices in critical infrastructure environments like electric utilities, oil and gas, manufacturing plants, or even cars. Today's cars are in fact data centers on wheels. So they collect a lot of information. They are transmitting a lot of information. So it also would fall under the IoT category uh, in the industrial vertical. So what are the problems with IoT devices? When we look at a consumer security camera, for example, take it as an example, and when we open the device, obviously we see uh, the name of the vendor that sold the device to us embossed on the hardware, but internally it's actually a collection of different subcomponents. You would have a camera with its associated hardware, then you would have a wireless card, which is, enables connectivity with your router. And then you would have any kind of memory that is used for locally storing the data that is collecting and so on. It could have other capabilities as well. So the vendor that has put this device together is procuring the subcomponents from his supply chain. And, and so we need to make sure that this vendor is in fact procuring parts from reputed supply base uh, who is also following good security practices. We also would like to know how this device is collecting the data. For example, if it's a video camera, if it's a security camera, it is collecting, recording all of the data from our homes, from our environments. 
and how is it storing it and how is it sharing the data internally for providing analytics or with external parties like we would like to know who which other parties actually has access to this data and we want to make sure you know the default username and passwords are being changed frequently so we shouldn't be using an iot device with the same manufacturer provided username and passwords and what about backdoor entry points which means who else can log into my device and look at the data it has been collecting is it just the manufacturer or nobody else or who else might be able to access the device the next thing is what kind of weaknesses and vulnerabilities are there in the software which is installed on the device who has checked for risks associated with those uh, with those software components and would would the user would we be alerted on any kind of security issues that may be discovered at a later point in time like after one year for example will we be notified if there is a security issue with the device and will the manufacturer provide a software update and if so for how long would he be doing that and can you actually contact the manufacturer of the device and ask him to delete the personal data that it had collected on you can you do that will there be is there is there a, an option available so those are some of the problems that we have today with iot devices these things are loosely defined there is no set process or a standard or a guideline uh, that people have to adhere to so that is the problem here is a chart on vulnerabilities in iot devices it shows all the way from 2010 until 2020 year to date i have pulled this data from the national vulnerability database which is a government us government maintained database of publicly disclosed vulnerabilities i filtered this specifically for iot devices and as you can see the number of vulnerabilities in iot devices has been rising since 2017 and what is a vulnerability the definition is it is a weakness which can be exploited by a threat actor to perform unauthorized actions so it's a weakness that exists within the firmware software within an iot device this is clearly not looking good there have been a number of cyber attacks on iot devices and many number of them are being launched against iot devices as we speak one of the popular attacks from recent past is a ddos botnet attack using a malware called mirai a botnet is a network of uh, interconnected devices or computers which are remotely controlled by an attacker and using this remote control he can launch a ddos attack distributed denial of service attack on a particular target so what i mean by that is for example an attacker can control these thousands or millions of iot devices with a particular weakness or a default username of password he has discovered and he can simultaneously spam the end server or end user or request a particular service from a particular server for example let's say the attacker wants to launch a ddos attack against twitter so what he does is he he makes these iot devices all request the same information from twitter at the same time so the twitter server which is normally not designed for handling this amount of traffic would go offline it won't be able to handle this level of traffic and it would cause an outage so a genuine user who wants to access twitter would no longer be able to do so that's called a distributed denial of service attack there also have been attacks on critical infrastructure environments like electric utilities attackers were able to control the devices within those environments and cause a substation to go offline and cut off power to an entire city for a number of hours uh, attackers have also launched attacks against uh, medical devices in hospital environments uh, which are serving patients and this is very dangerous because it can directly affect life and they have also been able to attack cars for example they can disable brakes or open your windows when you're going at 80 miles per hour on the freeway by this time you may be wondering shouldn't there be regulation to make sure these iot devices have some basic cyber security features capabilities built in shouldn't there be standards and guidelines 
and penalty mechanisms for vendors who are not following secure development practices. Unfortunately, given the diversity of IoT devices and given the diverse environments they are going to be installed in, it is not possible for any one standard to capture um, all of the requirements that are needed. For example, should a light bulb and a connected door lock have the same level of security? Obviously, you want your doors to be more secure than a light bulb. Or how much security should be built into your smoke detector, which is even more important. And should a standard cover only the bare essentials or should it aim for 100% security? Should it be more prescriptive on actually what the vendor should be doing or should it be more based on outcomes? So all of these things make it much more challenging for any one standard to capture the entirety of security requirements for IoT devices. Another thing to note is that any device that has been certified to be secure at the time of manufacturing does not need to be secure after an year when new vulnerabilities have been discovered in the software packages or libraries it has used. So we need to think about continuous monitoring and ensuring that patches are being rolled out by vendors in order to make sure, in order to maintain a security posture. If you look inside of a consumer IoT device, you'd find the building blocks as shown here. It is an abstraction, it is a simplification, but here are the main elements that you would find. Is a hardware layer, which is comprised of all the subcomponents that are put together. And then on top of it, you will have firmware or device drivers that talk to the hardware and make sure that they are able to do the function that they were designed to do. And then on top of it, you will have an operating system such as a Linux, Windows, RTOS, real-time operating system, or Android, or any of this uh, IoT softwares available. And then finally, you would have an application software. The challenge with IoT devices is they have been purpose-built to do a particular task or one or two functions. For example, a security camera, all it has been designed to do is just record video, store it, and transmit it to the cloud and give the user an ability to review the feed. But it is not designed to do other functions like your laptop or iPads. So these IoT devices have limited compute and memory. The second point is the vendors that are manufacturing these devices are not security experts. Many of them are small and medium businesses that come up with an idea, innovative idea, and they start making the product and security is not the first thing they think about when developing this IoT product. The third point is many times we are shopping online on Amazon, Walmart, Flipkart for IoT devices that are cheaper and many of them look the same and seem to offer same functionality. So we tend to go for the lower price devices. And these lower price devices means the manufacturer of the device is procuring components at the cheapest level possible, and he's trying to make a margin on it. So security is not something, an area that he's going to put investment in. And the fourth point is over the lifespan of the IoT device, the operating system, firmware, open source libraries that have been used in making the software application may become obsolete. And this makes it easy for the attackers to attack this IoT device if it has not been updated. When we look at industrial IoT devices, they carry the same risks that we talked about for consumer IoT devices, only that the challenges are now more magnified. The reason for that is industrial IoT devices are built to last for 15 to 30 years. Compare that to a consumer IoT devices which you will turn over in three to four years. They also, the IoT devices in industrial environments also speak proprietary protocols. That means you cannot use traditional IT security tools to protect these devices. Given the long lifespan of 15 to 30 years, they definitely will run into obsolete operating system and obsolete firmware issues. So the vendors of these devices need to have a proactive 
uh, way to manage security for these devices over the long lifespan. The other challenge with these IoT devices is because they are performing some mission critical work, serving patients in a hospital environment or running a substation or a power plant, they cannot be easily taken offline and updated or patched. And you cannot actively scan them because scanning them, meaning if you ping that device, it may freeze or respond in unintended ways. And the last point I wanna mention is the increasing convergence of IT and OT environments. Clearly there are benefits in bringing together information technology and operational technology environments together that will result in greater productivity, increased visibility. But unfortunately, it also exposes the IoT devices in these environments to more cyber attacks. Given all this, what should you do? From a consumer standpoint, he should definitely strive towards gaining more awareness about the risks posed by IoT devices. He should develop good cyber hygiene practices, meaning changing all of the default username and passwords provided by the vendor, resetting passwords every three or six months, and also segmenting the home network so that you can have all of the IoT devices on a sub-network, uh, thereby limiting the impact of any attack. Obviously, there is no easy solution today for consumers to manage security for their smart homes. Uh, there is clearly room for innovation. New startups could emerge in this area and help consumers develop good cybersecurity posture for their homes. For business and industrial customers, clearly they should strive to gain 100% or close to 100% visibility of what is connected to their network. If you do not know what is connected to your network, how can you develop protection plans to protect that particular device? So visibility is very important. And then a smart and intelligent vulnerability management program where you are prioritizing your vulnerability management program based on threat intelligence, your own business context is very important. And finally, customers and organizations should ask their vendors for a supply chain security report. That is, vendors should be prepared to provide their customers with a risk assessment of the IoT device. They should also make sure that the suppliers they are procuring the components from are following secure development practices. In my next part, I will get into IoT security in three different sectors. How are hospitals managing medical device security? How are automotive OEMs making sure that their cars are secure? And finally, how are critical infrastructure environments such as electric utilities, manufacturing plants, oil and gas, making sure that their environments are secure? Thank you for taking time to attend this and I hope to see you in the next part.